Welcome to Spirit Chat Radio with your host, Jennifer O'Neill, where the focus is to simplify the process of using the spiritual tools and gifts you were born with in a way that fits into your everyday life. Jennifer is a leading expert in the field of spirit communication and has spent the last 20 years as a professional psychic and spiritual teacher, helping people all over the world learn how to develop themselves spiritually through her books, podcasts, and her virtual learning center, Keys to the Spirit World. For the next hour, join Jennifer to discover different tools and techniques that will help you learn how to navigate the spirit world better and empower you on your own spiritual journey. Aloha and welcome to Spirit Chat Radio. Um, Today, my guest who is seems to be turning into a co-host of some sorts. Kao <laughs> is with with me again. Um, things have been flowing so well, and we've had a lot of subjects to cover. So welcome back, Kao. And Thank you. We thought we would do this really cool show on pet communication. Before I get into that, however, I did realize, I was talking to Kao about this earlier, that I do... Um, I realize that sometimes people don't know what what I do. Actually, I have lots of things I do, and uh, I do free podcasting or podcasting that most of you listen to, and well, obviously, or you're not listening right now. Um, then I do YouTube videos, and I have my Higher Purpose Learning Group, and I do a lot of these things, and I realized when I got a few emails and or questions about you know you always talk about finding a mentor and can you help me find one and then I kind of laughed and it dawned on me um, that that's what I do also but I don't know I don't think that I tell people the testing in the YouTube videos or whatever because I'm so used to just giving you guys all this information so I just to clarify before we get into the show I'm going to clarify about what me, what I do and a little bit what KO does and um, so that people understand. I do a lot of online classes, uh, developing your abilities and um, I do empath stuff, a lot of empath classes and I'm actually working on two classes right now, a dreaming class and a spirit communication class. Uh, besides that though, I also mentor. I do, I have a mentorship program where I help people to develop take it to the next level um, as far as a lot of my mentorship students are people who wanted to get into the healing industry and do things similar to what me and Kao do, do and actually as we talked about before Kao was the one that sort of pushed me in that direction um, I worked with her for a while and helped mentored her and she's like why are you not doing this Right. So like I always get to uh, mm-hmm. say things I tell you about, but that's one thing you told me. Um, and then I do readings also. <clears throat> so I do um, psychic readings as well. I will continue to do the readings until I just get too busy to do so. Um, my schedule is getting kind of crazy. I do do a lot of readings. I do a lot of mentor mentoring. Um, And then I have to divide that time between making the classes, working with the students, because I have these Facebook groups that I work with, with the students that they love. If you're a student of mine, you get into a Facebook group of other students. And then the radio shows podcasting, you know. uh, uh, But Kao, um, she does uh, something called the Petal Process, which is an organized reading, basically, which I love. And one of the things we are gonna, we're working together so well with on today's show is she also does mediumship, but she's gotten into pet communication, which we, we, I was nudging her towards as well, but that's turned out to be a super cool thing for you. You really love the pet communication, right? I really love the mentoring. I didn't think that I would love it as much as I do, but I love <laughs> the mentoring. And she was like, yeah, I knew you would. Um, but <laughs> the, the uh, pet communication you're loving, right? I mean, you really like, like I, that. I am. I love it so much. I love to be able to help the pets 
communicate with their owners, with their guardians, what what they would love to communicate to them. And that, it, it kept evolving. And I, I realized, um, again, you helping me to just kind of, you know, open up and step into that. I had always been communicating with pets. They were always communicating with me. And it was, again, something just like, oh, I thought this was normal. And then in doing my pedal process session with people, if they had a pet, that pet was right there. I could pick up on the pet's energy and deliver a message. Same with the mediumship reading. If there was a pet living or on the other side, I could tune in to that pet's energy, and they were so happy to deliver a message. So now I, I also, in addition to those two readings, I give straight pet communication sessions. Right, which is... Um, we're going to be talking about both today, ones that have passed um, pets, and just we're going to be talking all about pets, so as spirit guide pet or animal spirit pets or animal spirit guides, um, them communicating while they're alive, and then communicating in the spiritual realm. We're going to get into all that, and I think um, before we get into that, I want to get into a little bit more of healer mediumship talk, which would be. You know, that's really common when you said that you you just thought it was sort of natural and the pets started communicating with you, and then it wasn't until me and you started discussing it. Because, see, uh, for those of you who don't know, obviously, because it was just me and her on the phone, um, she would call and say, so weird that this person's pet popped through. And then I'd get another call, so weird. And I'm like, why are you not doing this pet <laughs> communication thing? This is not so weird. This is, <laughs> this is like a gift and a skill. And... Um, my point being, just because I'm doing a lot of the mentoring right now, I'm, I have a lot of mentorship students, that's really what mentorship is about, and that's why you want to find a mentor, is because even as you get into healing work, you really sometimes can't filter through um, and focus where you're supposed to be headed, and it's really easy for a mentor who's been in the industry for a long time, if you're a healer, um, to help you sort of focus in on some things that you're not seeing and sort of making you take responsibility for that and then giving you some tools to move forward in that direction. So if that makes sense, it's like I, I think a lot of people on their spiritual journey uh, get very confused on what their goal is and where they're headed and how to get there. And that's how the whole mentoring thing came about anyways. But this is not a show about mentorship, so we want to probably get into the animal pet communication. So I did a mini YouTube video on uh, animals vibrations rising. And the reason I did that is because I'm getting, again, I, I get lots of messages and emails and people kept asking me why they keep seeing all these, these certain animals and pets. And then if they, they wanted to know about, you know, well, if we're transitioning, it, do pets transition like spiritually into the new and en universal energy and absolutely I realized that I hadn't taught enough so I did the YouTube video but animals vibrations are actually raising faster than humans um, first of all their vibration is naturally higher number one it's just naturally higher than humans and people wonder about that well, what do you mean like why well mainly, and we're going to get into that a little bit more in a little bit here, is because they don't have the resistance that humans have. And they really rely heavily on their spiritual senses to basically thrive and survive. That's the, So um, humans are taught how not to spiritually align themselves. You come in spiritually aligned, and then over the years you're taught how to get the heck away from that because we're in the physical world and you have to do things like this and get a job and go to school and you know work somewhere you hate and um, don't be in tune with anything that you feel like you want to do or passionate about because how in the world are you ever going to make a living doing that? That's really fascinating. That's kind of when you know you're on the right track. If somebody tells you, right. how are you ever going to make a living doing that? Like that's, you've hit something on the head there. Isn't that funny? <laughs> um, so anyways, because they rely so heavily on their spiritual senses to thrive and survive, um, and they have not been taught to resist, their vibration is just naturally higher. And it's 
also transitioning, but it's raising quicker and faster. Um, so animals play a very large role in the spirit realm as well as they do in the physical realm. And we're going to talk about that a little bit, but I do want to cover, I think this is self-explanatory, but I'm going to let uh, K.O. talk about that for a minute as well. People have asked us both, do animals have souls? Mm -hmm. And what do you, I, don't you find that kind of funny that people, I mean, I, I don't think any question is a bad question. And I love that people ask me these things, but I always wonder, like, how do you think that they sort of navigate and have consciousness and move around? You know, like you get, do you get that question often or just sometimes? I do. And for me, I feel like people just want a reassurance that do they do. Yeah. yeah. Well, and I, they people just don't know. I don't, I don't think people talk about mm -hmm. it a lot, you know, but that is what mm -hmm. brings their body to life, just like it brings us to life. So, um, that, again, I think we've covered that pretty much already, but they do have souls. Um, their vibration is higher than humans because they naturally work with the spiritual senses, but let's talk about the rules. <clears throat> so one of the things that I notice is people don't really understand their role in the physical world, which is their healers. Uh, animal roles mm -hmm. are their healers. That's they are here. They raise your vibration, their companions and their protectors, but they really are healers. And we're going to talk a little mm -hmm. bit more about why they heal or how they heal and how you kind of really should be able to notice it anyways and probably have already um, as soon as we get back from this break. The cutting edge of Conscious Radio, OM Times Radio, IOM FM. Change and growth are part of natural life and also part of your spiritual life. Everyone needs support and guidance, especially during life passages. Upgrade yourself with the OM Times Experts program. With OM Times Experts, you have access to the best intuitive coaches, spiritual teachers, counselors, astrologists, and oracles. Our team was carefully selected so you can trust. Find out more at experts.ohmtimes.com. Tune in to the Practical Intuitive Mind, Body, Spirit for the Real World with me, host Robin Fritz, Mondays at 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 Eastern. I'll cover personal and business intuition, animal communication, mediumship, space clearing, past life regression, shamanic insights, energy healing, soul choice, and more, all to help you tap your own intuitive and healing skills. No ifs, ands, or buts. I'm Fidel Nshombo. I was born in a city called the Bukavu in the Congo. We were a loving family. And then, boom, everything that I had disappeared in a single day. People think that when you are a refugee and they resettle you to America and all your problems are done. They don't understand that that's the beginning of everything. I was not born a refugee. I was made one. It's time we welcome refugee families with open arms. Learn more at EmbraceRefugees.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council. Okay, we're back. And so we've been talking about animal vibrations and their purpose um, of why they're here. They have a physical purpose and a spiritual purpose. And you know, about their vibrations raising faster than humans uh, because they're not taught to resist their spiritual alignment and they really heavily rely on their spiritual senses to thrive and survive and navigate the world. And so they are steps ahead of us when it comes to transitioning into this new energy. And so one of the things that we were talking about right before break was animals' physical roles is they they're healers all animals pets animals um in the jungle animals everywhere their 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 purpose is to heal they're healers and how do they do that they do that by raising your vibration they they naturally will raise your vibration when you're around um 
an animal, when they begin to tune into you, they naturally can raise your vibration and or they also will be protectors and companions. And when they're companions, that also is a type of healing. Um, when you're engaging with an animal and exchanging energy with that animal, they, they are exchanging a different type of energy with you than you are with a regular uh, human and, uh, and with even a human who's a healer, so to speak. The, the healing energy that you're exchanging with them is very different. But I'm sure that when you are communicating with pets, which we'll get into more pet communication, K.O., um, what types of things do you no do you notice in regards to um, their owners and things that they want to commute with them or communicate with them? Do you ever notice, I guess I would say, because we'll save some of the other stuff for later, the healing aspect with their owners? Do you ever notice that? Does that come through? Absolutely. Um, time and time again, the pet whether it be a dog, a cat, even a rabbit has come through. Right. Um, the horses, time and time again, that animal is helping their owner, their guardian, to open their heart more, mm -hmm. to open their heart. And it's, it's the most beautiful thing because animals, they love unconditionally. Mm -hmm. There is yeah. absolutely no condition. And it's interesting, isn't it funny as we're talking about this, I think that people think the kind of roles are reversed, that sometimes humans are helping animals because, which, you know, mm -hmm. they can, of course, mm -hmm. uh, you know, they, they house them, they can feed right. them, especially if they rely on you. Uh, but the role that an, uh, an animal plays in, in really uh, changing a human's um, energetic is a lot greater i think people overlook it it's just something they don't think about because it's just not in the forefront you know but i know that they come through with a healing vibe uh, for sure um when they when there's readings coming about yeah because don't you notice though that the energy is yeah that that love energy that healing energy is a, is way more intense than when you're dealing with um somebody in someone you know else's what? energy it, it is. It, it is because mm -hmm. I can feel connecting with humans. I can feel what they're feeling. Connecting with the mm -hmm. animals, Jen, it's in. It, you're right. That's the perfect word. It's intense. And mm -hmm. it's really amazing because they impress that feeling upon me. I feel it in my heart. And mm -hmm. it almost brings tears to my eyes every time the love that that animal has for their guardian, for their mm -hmm. owner. It's mm -hmm. really amazing. I was giving this uh, a pedal process session to this woman once, and I said, do you have a cat? Because this cat came in just so clear into my vision, so clear, sat right in front of me in my mind's eye, and she said, why, can you smell it? <laughs> I said, no. She thought her house smelled <laughs> like cat litter. <laughs> I, said, I said, no, but I have to acknowledge this beautiful black cat sitting here. And she said, oh, that's my cat. And, and he was hiding. I had no idea she had a cat. And she asked, why is he here? He's, he's alive. She goes, is everything okay? I said, yes. And I, the cat impressed upon me. I'm here to help soften her heart. Mm -hmm. And, oh, my gosh, do you know, after I delivered that message, that cat came out from underneath the bed that he was napping at, came out and sat right in front of her, stared mm -hmm. at her while I continue to deliver his message. Yes. So they're, they're, they're incredibly intuitive. Yeah. They're, they're incredibly, mm -hmm. um, they, and we're going to get into this, that in the communication part. Um, but yeah, it's pretty amazing. But whenever I've done readings and pets come through, or even if you're doing mediumship, whether, whether they're alive or not alive, the intensity of their energy on a healing aspect and love level is just totally different. Like you can absolutely right. tell a pet um, or, or as we get in even more to the animals, the spirit animals and stuff, um, it's just a very different vibration and it's really intense with love and healing. It's, it's amazing mm -hmm. and wonderful. Um, so we, they're, they're healers. They raise your vibration. They open your heart chakras. They do all this. And like you said, they're unconditional, um, 
with their love and their loyalty. Um, but they, they also play a role in the spiritual realm, animals do, animals and pets. Now, the versus a spirit animal, uh, uh, so that we can kind of tell you the difference here. Um, but pets and ones that incarnate, um, not a spirit animal, which like I said, I'm going to tell you about in a minute. They, you can have many lifetimes with pets. And I've had people ask about that and like um, often, more often than not, because their role in the spiritual realm as well, if they're incarnating often would be as a companion also not a spirit animal guide that's a little bit different than guiding you and a protector in the spiritual realm and in other lifetimes so sometimes or more often than not I will see that somebody has incarnated with a pet you know three lifetimes or something versus one I will see that there's mm -hmm. been several lifetimes with that pet it, and you may have lived 57 lives but you will more often than not when you're really uh, connecting with one of your pets and you have so much love for this pet that's not the first lifetime that you do you have people ask you that or do you notice that often I just I I usually see more than I don't that there's more than one lifetime with that pet yes and people do ask especially if um, I'm giving a reading I've been called to give a reading to a pet who is um, about to transition and uh, that the owner will in desperation say when are they coming back are they going to reincarnate mm -hmm. and usually the, the answer is yes they will reincarnate I do not I cannot tell right when. well and that's an interesting one because that depends on the pet on all different kinds of things how fast that they're going to reincarnate so there's not a rule of thumb on that like all pets incarnate mm -hmm. um, if they're and some of them don't incarnate during your lifetime and they just hang out in the spiritual mm -hmm. realm and one of the things that uh, trip pe trips people up when they are incarnation um, whether it be humans or pets or whatever is and I had somebody ask me this question the other day I heard that she says I heard that um, is there a transition time between when you can communicate with a loved one who has passed over and how long is it because I hear that they have to go through the through this t transition people don't realize often they don't realize that time in the spiritual realm is not even close to the time frame in the physical realm it's it's very 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 different so you can have time on in the spiritual realm realm in a blink literally in a blink of an eye could be like your entire lifetime here so mm -hmm. they can transition do whatever that they need to do and communicate with you in a matter of minutes um, of passing and still have gone through their transition um, and the reflection session and all that that they have to do when they pass on the other side and still be back which seems like just instantly um, I often is I'm trying to think the last few family members that had passed that I was close to um, they I they had come to visit me and was in my room or in my presence they ever called and said they'd passed so it was like mm -hmm. that quick like they were there letting me know literally just being like hey I'm good now you know I'm out of here type of thing but yeah I'm good um, and it'll usually to me or um, often my son, um, my daughter would just keep her eyes shut <laughs> but, <laughs> real tight. But um, they will come in really quickly. Pets are no different. They can come in quickly or not quickly. And uh, they may or may not incarnate in your lifetime. It depends on, you know, what contracts that they have and what that their job is to do. Um, that brings us into something that I want to touch upon everybody has a spirit guide we've talked about this before um, but also you have animal spirit guides and uh, you usually have more than one and they are your pet do you ever have people ask you that because I have people ask me is is 
was my, you know, little German shepherd, was that my spirit guide? That's yes. no. Yeah. Yes. Do you have that question? Okay. Yeah, I do. And then when that pet transitions, is that pet now guarding me? Yeah. My spirit. They can. Yes. they can guard you. They can. And I'm sure that you, you know that and tell them that mm-hmm. and they can come in and, and offer protection. But, uh, animal spirit guide is very, very different. They're they're They, that animal spirit guide doesn't incarnate during your lifetime. Um, their vibration is different. So when I do readings or whatever, and I know their animal spirit guides around, they're definitely, um, they have more of a protector vibe than that really healing, loving vibe. They have more of a guardian Mm -hmm. vibe to them. Mm -hmm. Um, They are here during your entire lifetime. You usually have more than one. Usually I would, the average I would say is three. Um, And they, their role, I find this really awesome. Um, Their role is actually to literally guard you from um, lower vibration entities and spirits um, and different things that you actually uh, don't realize that you get protection from the two ways you get protection is from your angels, um, and your animal spirit guides, your regular spirit guide doesn't necessarily offer for the protection and do call in protection for you or a guider. And, um, they don't, you know, they're not out there just putting their hands up and guiding people. They're like call, directing, they're directing the course. Um, So we'll get back to their roles right after this break. Bringing a more conscious lifestyle to your world. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Ascending Hearts is no ordinary dating site but a spiritual dating site with a purpose, to link you with your soulmate. We engineer the serendipity so you can trust that you will attune with someone that has the same matching vibration as you. Ascending Hearts, the conscious dating site for the spiritually aware. Try Ascending Hearts for free, ascendinghearts.com. Hello, I'm Lisa Berry. Join me every Monday at 1 p.m. Eastern Time for Light on Living, a chance to see new, hear different, and feel more as I shine the spotlight on all the ways to lighten the load of life's challenges. Light on Living is your link to that new way you're looking for, that new understanding that will enhance your life, and that positive connection that will support your growth. So join me and you'll gain insight and start to see things in a new way that motivates you. You're not wired to have a response to this sound. You're neutral to it, and you can hear it repeatedly without feeling anything. But when we introduce a new stimulus, save the food, we've achieved pulling a natural or inborn response from you. Save the food, because 40% of all food in the U.S. never gets eaten. Save the food. Cook it, store it, share it. Just don't waste it. For tips and recipes, visit savethefood.com. Brought to you by NRDC and the Ad Council. Welcome back. So we've been talking about um, animal roles for the last segment here. Animals' vibration, the roles they played in the physical realm, and now the roles they play in the spiritual realm. But we've gotten to uh, animal, spirit animals, your guides, your spirit animal guides. And they are energy, energetic protectors. They play a different role. They feel very different than a pet coming through. They do not incarnate with you at the time the role is very different um one thing that i don't touch upon a lot because i i try to keep everything very simple into things that really you need to be paying attention to and that apply to your life and this is for more like advanced stuff but there are things that you need to protect be protected from energetically it's not but i don't want to i don't like to freak people out like them running around going oh my gosh i need to make sure i have an animal spirit guide and i need to make sure i'm communicating with them and what about my angels and i don't want them doing that because these things were all in place for you before you came down so you didn't have to worry about it anyways but if you're interested in wondering 
what an animal spirit guide does. They are an energetic protector. And so they put a buffer between you and low vibration spirits that try to um, come into your circle, into your bubble. And that's, like I said, more of an advanced show. Um, they can, uh, you know, start talking to you lower vibrations and havoc, but that's a whole different show. So we're not going to get into that. Um, and how to figure out your spirit animal is one of the things I'm going to talk about. Um, and then I'm going to get into, or, or let, uh, KO talk more about the pet communication. What animal are you drawn to KO? Do you know? Do you know what your spirit, your animal, well, your spirit animal is? Yes, I am. Uh, I've been told in my um, learning and my teachings when I was in Hawaii that my we call it the amakua, your spirit animal, is um, the great whale. Mm -hmm. <laughs> big, big, yes. huge heart. Yes, they um, can be. They can heart. be. Somebody had posted on my group because I asked people to start saying what animals that they were drawn to. Um, or to, was their favorite animal and uh, whales, sharks, those can definitely mm -hmm. be spirit animals. Um, and like I said, you usually have three or more. So um, yours is a whale, you feel? Um, I, I, have yeah. always, I have always been very drawn to two things. I definitely, it's funny because when I was little and I remember I remember thinking, why am I here? Like, and I would remember the other side. Like I remembered where I had come from and I, mm. I was very homesick. I couldn't understand what in the world I was doing in this room. And it had these walls. It was the most bizarre feeling ever. I'll never forget it. And, um, I always wondered where my tiger was <laughs> because uh. I, yes, I always wondered where my tiger was and I would dream about him. And, um, I, that was, that's one of my, uh, animal, uh, my spirit animals, my spirit gu animal guides, and also a shark as well. I've been very mm -hmm. drawn to them my entire life, but how can you figure out what your spirit animal is? If you're listening to, um, you will three ways you will it's usually an animal that you are always drawn to that you've always loved like my son's is uh, a panther and a jaguar mm -hmm. and he's just totally been drawn to them forever and my my daughter is an elephant she elephants everywhere um any an animal that you're drawn to and that you love and that you know is your favorite animal is almost always um, that's a very good indication of that being your spirit animal. And people think it's just something that they just are drawn to in their brain, but it's not. When you think about your favorite animal, you get that feeling right in your chest center. You get that tingly kind of like attachment feeling in the chest area. And for those of you thinking about it, just think about it for a minute. What your favorite animal is, that feeling, you'll, it'll couple with a feeling right in the solar plexus area kind of a tingly or like a loving feeling. And that's because that is your soul recognizing that spirit animal that is your protector and your guider. I mean, that's just the way it is. It's an indication. Um, you will also many times dream about your spirit mm -hmm. animal and or sometimes they will pop up and show up at odd places or often like on a shirt and then maybe on a book and then it's like, especially if you're trying to figure something out or having issues, they'll like their, their little uh, faces or um, different things will show up in several different places and try to get your attention. So that's another good indicator of a spirit animal. And you know what the, the um, I, I, if we have time, I'm gonna get into birds as well um, at the end oh, of birds. this. Oh, birds, yeah. Yeah, but because we- Birds we, so strong. Oh yeah. and. Well, maybe we should just cover that really quickly. We our our th segments go so fast, but birds. I was in the shower and I realized everybody keeps asking me about birds and what their role is. And birds are spiritual messengers. Mm -hmm. um, this is birds are sent. They're 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 sent by your guides and they are sent to 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 deliver messages. They usually are sent in a way to get your attention, 
to either pay more attention of that you're on the right track or to offer support or to, um, you know, get you to like some people will say like, I don't know what to do with this. I, should I do this? And then maybe a bird shows up and like sits on their doorstep for a while. You know, mm -hmm. birds are spiritual mess messengers. The message that they're delivering is all different. So that is something that you, in the way that you can remember birds are spiritual messengers is because how many hundreds of years have they used birds and ravens and different things as messengers? You know, they actually tied mm -hmm. messages to them, but birds are spiritual messengers um, and insects and, um, you know, frogs and uh, different things like that. They're also uh, very spiritual um, um, creatures and they show up at different times to al align a message for you or to really get you to try to tune in because many times um, I remember reading a message sometime where they said a frog just had leaped in front of them and really just peered at them. And that makes you take a moment to focus and reflect on something internally. It, may, it gives you that feeling right in that solar plexus area um, of some mm -hmm. type of message they're trying to deliver. So it will make you direct and refocus uh, to the spiritual aspect of yourself and sort of tune in there. And there's somewhere in there will lie the message. Um, so most of the time, if people don't overthink it with a bird or a frog or whatever, um, and they just basically ask myself, ask yourself, why would this bird show up at this time? Or why would this frog show up at this time? Almost always, if you don't overcomplicate it, because they deliver very simple messages also, um, that you can actually figure it out. You can go, oh, this is very synchronistic to this thought I was having or this conversation we were having or that I was needing extra support. You know, it was very synchronistic to a feeling that they were trying to pass to me. Um, but people overcomplicate it and go, was that my great grandma trying to tell me, you know, like <laughs> I, <laughs> they do like weird things like that. Um, so let's get into animal pet communication like pets, not just animal spirit guides and animals like you would see at the zoo, you know, oh, I shouldn't even touch upon the zoo thing. That makes me really frustrated. I don't like to, I cannot go in zoos. I cannot. Absolutely mm. makes me sick to my stomach. Um, it's horrible because I can hear the pets or the animals. It's just like, oh, I don't even know why that even mm -hmm. came up in my head. Um, but so animals... I'm going to allow you to talk about most of the time when I'm dealing with animals, um, animals deal with their clairs. Um, most of the time it's pictures and um, a clairvoyance, mm -hmm. clairaudience, um, and a claircognizant. They actually pass their stuff to you telepathy wise. So you can, or in my experience, this is how I communicate with them. Um, you can see pictures, you can get impressions, you can get full stories, you can get all kinds of stuff through telepathy. Um, how would you explain uh, how pets communicate with you to people or how do you explain? That's like if exactly somebody, if you're doing the, one. Yeah, so the pet will uh, show me a picture. For example, um, again, the pets get really excited to be able to d deliver a message. Um, and the pet's showing me, uh, for example, their water bowl. And they're showing me that the water bowl is empty. So I will ask mm -hmm. the owner, um, have you, have you, uh, does the pet have enough water during the day? And half, half the time, the, the, the owners are usually like, oh, shoot, I forget to fill up their water dish or something. Mm -hmm. So that's you know, kind of a surface thing. The pets also love to, to let me know what they would like to eat or something they've had that the owner's not giving them again. It's oh, the that's funny. funniest. <laughs> it's the funniest thing. I was giving a reading to this, um, to the, my client and she has a little tiny dog and the dog was showing me that it wanted to use its teeth and crunching. And then it impressed upon me the feeling of, I need to use my teeth. So I relayed that message and I asked the owner, um, are you giving your dog hard kibble? And she said, no. 
And she, she was afraid that something might happen with the dog, like choking because she had lost a pet before to that. So, so she was giving I the animal like, like soft, soft, food? soft food, okay. soft food. So, so then when, again, I delivered that message, the pet, they always look at their owner because they know, and we weren't together at the, uh, we were together, but the pet wasn't there um, mm. at certain times. When I'm giving the message, and we're all, t- the three of us are together, the pets will sit there and stare at the owner. They know that they are receiving a message. And so I mm-hmm. relate it to, to uh, this woman, the pet needs to chew it uh, mm-hmm. for many different reasons, <laughs> because right. it was of the teeth, for the health, for the digestion, and because the pet right. knows that it's, it's a dog, it needs to chew. Mm-hmm. So that was, that was really amazing. Um, and they will impress upon me their feelings, how they're feeling toward their owner. Um, I was giving a reading for this beautiful uh, dog who was in transition, and he wanted his owner to know that she, that he has been her guardian this lifetime. It was mm-hmm. the sweetest, most loving message he wanted her to know i've been your guardian and i relayed that message i said he wants you to know that he's he's your guardian and she mm-hmm. said he he has been and, and she was living by herself up in la and he was the guardian he was the mm-hmm. protector and so he wanted just to he wanted me to know that he wanted her to know that before he transitioned knowing that she was going to be okay without him oh yeah yeah Okay, well, yeah. we are going to talk more about what, how I'm going to have K.O. talk more about how you can communicate with your pets and how I've, I can be helpful in that area as well as soon as we get back from the break. Your conscious connection to a more mindful world. Om Times Radio, IOM FM. Humanity Healing International is a small nonprofit with a big dream. Since 2007, HHI has been working tirelessly to bring help to communities with little or no hope. Our projects are not broad mandates, nor are they overnight solutions, but they bring the reassurance that no one is alone and that someone cares. To learn more, please visit humanityhealing.org. Humanity Healing is where your heart is. Hi, I'm Kelly Fox, host and astrologer of The Astrology Show. Each week, I'll give you access to the current transits, which are a valuable tool that provide astrological information to help unlock the potential each of us has. Understanding the stars can help steer us in the right direction to make better informed choices. So if you're wondering what's going to happen in your week ahead, be sure to tune in to The Astrology Show for guidance. Mondays at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. Listen, my life changed because someone was there to get me to use drugs. No one can understand. People think that having someone who will listen makes it better. I need help. I'm listening. I need help. I think that having someone who will listen makes it better. People understand. No one can get me to use drugs. My life changed because someone was there to listen. Go to heretolisten.com for tips and tools to turn addiction around. Brought to you by the Ad Council. Aloha and welcome back. We were just discussing um, some of the most common things that pets like to portray to Kao when she's doing reading. So... The mo- or the pet communication, I guess I would say. So the most common things would be things that they like to eat, mm-hmm. um, uh, like issues that they're having, not enough water, how they're feeling. Mm-hmm. Th- those would you say would be the top three, or that's what you experience mostly? Yes, that, and then people contact me when they're having behavioral issues. Um, with okay. their pets, so they mm-hmm. they absolutely love the opportunity to let let their owners know this is why I'm behaving the way I am. What would be and for instance of some of be, for like instance, why they would I, behave? 
Yeah, a certain way. For instance, um, gosh, there's so many stories. Oh, okay, one, um, one of my clients, her dog, very jovial, very happy usually. All of a sudden, this dog was hiding underneath the bed, kept hiding under the bed. And she couldn't figure out why, so she contacted me. I tuned into the dog. The dog showed me a snake. And then the dog showed me the pattern of a rattlesnake. And he showed me his area outside. So I asked his owner, I said, was there a snake in your yard? And she said, yes. And what had happened was the dog showed me that he, he's a larger uh, pit bull, was protecting his little brother, his little fur brother. He was standing in between the little guy and the snake, just, just making sure the little guy didn't get hurt. And now he knows that the snake can come into their yard. So at first, they didn't realize what had happened because their gardeners found the snake, uh, got rid of the snake, and threw it in their trash. And so they didn't know till later when they opened their trash, there was this horrendous smell, and that's when they saw it. And they never put the two together that the dog had actually encountered the snake because the mm. gardeners didn't say anything. They had no idea. They just thought the gardeners found it. Well, the dog has showed me that he was scared that the snake, you know, it, it was a big deal what, he, what happened to him. And he wanted kind of some reassurance, had some trauma there to make sure that the snake wouldn't, wouldn't harm himself, his family, and his little mm-hmm. fur brother. So they, there's like snake guards that they put around their, their yard. And so I, I informed the owners, I said, you need to sit down with this dog and, first of all, acknowledge what he did. Acknowledge his, his bravery and reassure him, talk to him, reassure him that you took measures and walk him around the yard and let him know that he's safe. They did that at, within two days. The dog was back out from under the bed, jovial, happy, like nothing ever happened. That's a good story because that brings me to something that I think that people need to realize is because dogs, animals, pets are telepathic, um, Mm -hmm. you know, people think, and they do understand certain words that you say, but when you say, do you want to go for a walk? People don't realize yet. They think that the animals are always listening to those exact words. But when you say that, you're actually having a visualization in your own mind that comes with that. Your pet then reads Mm -hmm. that visualization. They read the telepathy. And I kid you not, I've tested that time and time again, even with my own pets. Because if we are going to the beach, my dogs love to go to the beach. And all you have to do, or my dad takes them to the beach all the, with uh, a friend of his. And if the friend calls and says, do you want to go to the beach? All that that ha- has to happen is that. And he will get the thought in his head that, you know, yes, mm-hmm. we'll go to the beach. She, my dog will not be anywhere around him when the phone call happens and she will start doing a dance. She knows she mm-hmm. hears t- telepathically that he's getting ready and preparing himself to go to the beach. It's the same time as it's the same thing as if I'm going to the beach and I'm not going to take her because I don't always take her depending on time of day or whatever or how long I'm going to be down there. And I'll have to really impress upon her in my mind n- without even saying anything, I'm going to the beach, but no, you're not going with me. And like kind of be firm in what I'm thinking and she'll calm down and not go. So mm-hmm. when the owner sat down with the the dog you can you you can say the words out loud and do all that but as you're acknowledging and oppressing upon and you can talk to them hear you clear clearly clear as day you know what i'm saying absolutely absolutely but, as but you can still feel say it the, out loud. They, they feel you as well they feel yes. the tone in your voice they feel the soothing they're they under they do understand what you're saying and absolutely yes that's been my experience as you're talking, you're seeing in your mind. Yes. You're, so, and you're projecting to them, uh, the, the feeling, the telepathic. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's the same yeah. as like, I noticed when we would take her walking when she was younger and sometimes my husband, when, you know, they get all excited 
and um, it, like another dog would come around, he'd kind of get tense and want to. And anybody who even watches the what Caesar Milan show or whatever that is um, knows it, it let, literally is an energy you project. Um, if a dog would come, he'd get kind of tense and want to pull her near. And I'd just be like, no, let's just keep walking. And she and I would just imagine and you know and visualize not on purpose, but let's just keep going. Let's just keep moving. I'm not going to wait for you to get all excited with this dog keep keep on track and she would always follow me she would just continue to go but when my husband would do it she would stop and get all because he would t stop and get mm -hmm. tense um, <clears throat> but they definitely are energy readers they mm -hmm. are super sensitive to people that's why sometimes well in my house anyways I don't know about you have a smaller dog and smaller dogs sometimes get more nervous around people because of their size. Um, but like my dog's a German Shepherd and and she, uh, man, she will react different to people that come up to the door. And you can, t I can tell how afraid people are of her because of the, mm -hmm. because of her behavior. I can tell if somebody has sketchy energy because she mm -hmm. will, the hair will stand up on her back and she'll get like aggressive barking. Sometimes she just likes to scare people because she's being a protector and she has a different bark for that. But there's been a few times that there's some people that have come over that have had some weird energy she didn't like. And man, that hair stood up on her back and she was way more aggressive in taking her protector mm. stance. And so they're very sensitive to people in their surroundings and the earth and environment. I find mm -hmm. that people don't even realize how in tune because they are, their vibration is so high because they are so in tune with their spiritual senses. They then they can actually predict there's even been documentation of like when there's an earthquake or some major earth shift that's going to happen or whatnot. They move. Uh, they've had things where the elephants have moved to higher ground and animals when they knew there was going to be a tsunami. Um, or different things like that. They're just very, very in tune because they work with their spiritual senses. But how would you suggest and do you feel about people communicating with their pets? Everyone like, do you can just... communicate with their own pet. They can. And how is by getting down and being present with your pet, being present with your pet, let them project a message onto you. Let them ask them, do you, do you have a message for me? What is it you want me to know? You will get a feeling or you will see a picture. Then do not question what you're seeing. I've noticed uh, um, in sharing this with a lot of people, they then question, well, I got that, that he wants, you know, to um, go to uh, I don't know, walks more or something. And then they question what they're seeing. He's showing me a leash. Then they question it. And then it kind of like pops that, that little right. um, intuitive bubble that they just got. So don't, yep. don't question what you're receiving the message from your pet and know everybody that your pet is there again, like Jen said, to help you evolve, to help you lift your vibration. So, Allow that pet to tune in. Allow your heart to expand with your pet. And, um, again, just not, not questioning um, messages that you receive from them. And that yeah. can also just really strengthen uh, the relationship with, that you have with your pets when you feel that heart-to-heart that -heart connection with them. Well, yeah, and it gets easier. The more you work with that stuff that you were talking about, mm -hmm. um, the easier people will find to connect with them. Um, mm -hmm. But sometimes people can't connect with them if one is not feeling well and their, their heartstrings are too involved with that pet. Sometimes they do need to um, call somebody if you do want to connect, which is, yeah, <laughs> calling KO. Um, it, you know, sometimes people, their hearts... Your heart and, and your emotions can block your intuitive senses when you're dealing with somebody or something that you love. That's why a lot of readers should not read their own children or family members, immediate family members a lot of times, because your heart and all these other emotions can get involved. And sometimes that happens with a pet. But for day-to-day -day stuff, I think that that was very good. You know, like you said, listen, 
don't question the pictures. Mm -hmm. um, just kind of mm -hmm. sit there and absorb what you feel like they're trying to impress upon you. And then you can ask them a question back and they'll like wag their tail or jump up or they'll just stare at you sideways and be like tilting their head sideways. So mm -hmm. it, it, you know, we're getting towards the end of the show. I just want to wrap up with um, your website again, if they want to pick communicate with you. <laughs> my, <laughs> my website is connect with KL, K E A O dot com. Okay, and so she can help you connect with pets that have passed or that you're having issues with. Um, and for those of you, before we get to the end of the show here, um, don't forget, for those of you who want to connect with me, uh, you can go to keystothespiritworld.com. I have this cool little mini e-course up there for free. Um, but you can also go to the contact button if you want to know about any of the mentorship stuff my classes or there's all buttons up there for that but don't forget to click on my spirit community top right corner ask to connect ask to join it in it's a super cool group um, where you can ask us all kinds of questions so hopefully you enjoyed the show and until next time have a wonderful day aloha thanks for connecting everyone